Okay, hi guys. So, governance matrix. This is really important for anybody, particularly at your application stage, but this is also really good knowledge to have as an approved provider and how you're going to um, structure your business, what your reporting requirements are, or your reporting mechanisms, or your delegation of authority, all those sorts of things. That's what this works for. So your governance structure, who is who in the zoo, so to speak? So your approved provider under the legislation is the person that holds the, the entire responsibility to make sure that the service operates in accordance with the legislation. So that could be a company. It can be a person and it can be an individual, but that can be a company. So I'm gonna unpack this in the context of me. So that would be, for me, that would be JPS. So the company holds the liability to make sure the education and care legislation is met at all the times. Then I'm going to delegate that authority over to a nominated supervisor. And that nominated supervisor is the person who does, um, who makes sure that the company is meeting their obligations under the legislation. So that would be an individual. Now, that can be you as the approved provider. There's a lot of approved providers that also, they're the representative of the company, whether that be a director or a partner or whatever that is, and they are also the nominated supervisor. But let's, if we unpack it in my context, then that would be me. So that would be Jodie, who is, who is the day-to-day -day operator, and Jodie then has to answer to the company, which is JPS, so that's how we do that. Then we would also have a, a delegation of authority down here, because the coordinator, particularly in family daycare, has liability under the legislation to make sure that educators are meeting the education and care legislation. So this coordinator would have a job description, this coordinator would have a contract, this coordinator would have a whole range of things that they need to be meeting. So that would be another individual. And that individual now, I don't, I don't think I spelled it right, that individual now is reportable to Jody. What does Jody need to know? Jody needs to know the compliance of the service. Compliance. Jody needs to know what the program is, whether that's meeting the children's needs. Jody needs to know what the client base is. Jody needs to know a whole range of things. So that coordinator now has that responsibility in order to report all of that to Jody so that Jody can make sure that JPS are meeting their obligations. So, so far so good, all makes sense. Then this is just a position within the company, the educational leader, it's not necessarily, it doesn't really hold any liabilities. The liabilities sit with these three roles here, but the educational leader does play an important role in the service as far as making sure that children's needs are met, that um, the educational program is reflective of, of the outcomes, that they are keeping the right documentation, that it is reflective, that you know all those sorts of things are going on here at this role. And this role should be supportive of the educators to make sure that they are meeting that obligation under the legislation. Now, educators, particularly in family daycare, educators in family daycare, which, which differs greatly from, um, from centre-based services or centre-based educators, educators in family daycare, they are actually liable for fines. If you look at the legislation, there's, there's fines for family daycare educators that are not um, for long daycare educators because generally speaking, well, no, it's not only the employment arrangement, but just purely because the model, and I don't know whether I've talked to you about the model before. So this is the model of a long daycare centre, right? So you've got your office, which is your approved provider or nominated supervisor, if you can see that. And then you've got your room one, room two, room three, room four. So that's generally speaking what a long daycare centre looks like. With a, a family daycare service, you've got the approved provider who sits in an office. It could be like a home office or it could be whatever, but they're, they're generally in office. And then you've got your educators are off here. So you've got this, this um, isolation for want of a word, or you've got this... Um, wide distribution even. So you, you're the, the model is really, really different. So we've got to figure out how that model works for you. So with family daycare, educators in family daycare do have liability 
and it's purely based on this model. So educators with that liability, they can be fined for a whole range of things and they need to be aware of what they can be fined for and you as a service provider need to be aware what they can be um, fined for and you need to be monitoring that, you need to be informing them of that, you need to be helping them and supporting them and making sure that they've got the right information so that they don't attract any fines. We don't want people attracting fines. So that's that's pretty much how this works. So as far as what what with this governance matrix, what you would sometimes do is the nominated supervisor would put responsibilities onto the educator, which we see in family daycare and which is the norm in family daycare, about filling in checklists or daily timesheets or having X responsibilities, whatever those are, and they are they do differ from service to service, but these need to be reported back somehow. So ultimately this person or this company or this entity can meet their obligations under the legislation. So that's kind of how it works because ultimately with the department, whether it be your state regulatory authority or your federal regulatory authority, it does actually come down to this person. So what are the mechanisms? Now, if you've got people at this level that are non-compliant, That actually reflects directly here. Like it or lump it, whether you like it or not, doesn't matter. That actually directs here. So we've got to figure out, you've got to figure out what are the mechanisms that you need to have in place in order to make sure that your educators remain compliant at all times so that your company remains compliant at all times so that the service meets the service meets its obligations under the legislation. So I hope that clarifies for you what a governance matrix should look like, what are some of the things you should consider. If you've got any more questions, please feel free. I've always got links in the bottom here. Jump on board for your individual circumstances because it does change from service to service. Um, long daycare looks very different to this. It, it, it does change all the time. So let me know how you're going. Just a quick overview of what a governance matrix should be, what a governance matrix should consider. Anyway, we'll talk soon. See ya. Bye.